Hoping to speed your bookkeeping up, we've well, come to the right place. As a business accountant, my team and I spent all day long helping business owners on their journey, and bookkeeping is a massive part of what we do. I can't tell you the importance of decent bookkeeping. If you've heard me talk about how to save tax, you'd have heard me repeatedly saying, keep good records. So of course, bookkeeping is important. There's loads of other content we've put out on here and uh, podcasts and the like, blogs telling you about all the important things you might wanna do and how you can use tech and all these things. But I wanted to talk today just some basic tips, top level, practical stuff, how can I get this done quicker? Because uh, for a lot of owners, bookkeeping is something they don't particularly enjoy and they might not be at the, uh, the, the particular place in their business financially where they're looking to outsource this or maybe they actually quite like it and they're just looking for a better workflow. So whatever your position, I'm sure there'll be something in this video for you. Now, before we get on with it, if you like these type of videos, make sure to click the subscribe button and the bell below to get notified whenever we release more just like this one. So then I'm gonna give you some tips. Uh, some of them are kind of meld across the various different topics and tips. So don't worry too much that you know, I think you'll get a feel for this as we go. So tip number one, absolutely the best tip there is, and that's make sure whatever you do, whatever your system, do it regular and often. There is nothing worse than doing like a year's worth of bookkeeping at the last minute because you've got to get your accounts or your tax return done. Trying to remember what you spent money on when you see a transaction in your bank, like what could be 18 odd months ago, and um, by the time you've allowed yourself to, to do the tax return after the year end, then you might not even know. It's really difficult. And the chances are you're gonna lose some expenditure out there somewhere that could have been deducted for tax. There might be some personal income that you've used, some funds you've used, you've not recorded it. You're going off your bank statements and these things all pass your mind. Uh, I know I can even use my own experience where I've been out and bought some kind of personal credit card because the business one either didn't work for some reason or it's knackered or I've forgotten it. And then it's like, do I remember to go back if I was to leave any time to go from a personal credit card and find the four pound I spent on a rail a charge or parking charge or something like that you know it's, it's not likely so regular and often is absolutely the tip weekly is best if you can do it daily some of the tech i was talking to an owner the other day and they have just reinvested in tech um, and they've gone and got themselves like a zero or quickbooks subscription and they were like it's transformational in terms of i can just do this every day it takes me two minutes and it's done when they've set it up well so regular and often now we said tech Tech could be an entire video. In fact, it could be an entire series of videos. But whatever you do, you should think about your system as a whole. What's your workflow? And more importantly, can technology help me get there quicker? So one of the massive, amazing changes about bookkeeping in the accountancy sector in, say, modern times, probably the last 10 years in reality, is the shift to cloud. So cloud accounting, you know, you can go on your web browser basically and, and use um, from anywhere, from any computer with an internet connection, your accounting software. And a lot of providers have made things that plug into those accounting softwares. One of those things being open banking. So banking, your bank, nearly all banks, will plug in a feed that sends all your daily transactions into this piece of software. And it makes it vastly easier because you're not having to enter date, where it's from, and all the rest of it, just to get your, if you imagine you're doing a spreadsheet, every transaction you're putting in there, you don't need to do it. You, it literally comes in as a feed. The machine learning in there will help you then look at how to categorize it. So if you regularly categorize things as travel, it will suggest, oh, is this travel? And you can actually make rules to force it to do that as well. So for repeating transactions, let's say you've got an Adobe software subscription and you see the same thing every month, you can teach the software to know that Adobe subscription always goes to say software and it, you know, it just process automatically or semi-automatically to the point where you just got press a click, depends on the system. But using tech like that can really help you. So can say receipt capture apps, something like Dext, uh, which is used to be called Receipt Bank, but you can snap loose receipts and it reads uh, certain times, dates, uh, VAT amounts, you know, all these things, um, saves you time from a data entry point of view. And again, you can teach it rules so that then it sends it straight into your software. All needs set up and there is still some human interaction, but just like, wow, the speed that this tech and the amount of time it can save when you've got that workflow set up well is just amazing. So can't tell you enough, really do look at the tech or reach out to some people, watch some videos, see what people are using to help speed that up because it's forever changing, it really is. And it's one of the more exciting points about the accounting industry. Now this one's really practical. You can do this regardless of where you're keeping your records, whether you're in tech, whether you're not but keep personal expenditure out of your business accounts. So hopefully you're running a separate business account or certainly just a separate account you keep your business transactions in regardless of what, what it is at the bank. Um, because if you do this, A, it's cleaner. If you ever get investigated by the revenue, at least you can just show them that bank account and it's all nice and tidy. It's really clear what it is, that helps. 
if you use an accountant, they're going to love you for the fact that you can e they can easily identify your business transactions. But if you even if you're not, if you're just doing it yourself and doing the bookkeeping, which is what we're talking about here, then just not having to deal and think about all these other transactions is a massive time save. We know as bookkeepers here that in our bookkeeping team, we spend hours just going, oh yeah, that's nothing to do with business, or asking questions to owners, and they're like, yeah, it's nothing to do with business. It was the wrong card, you know, that Mackie D's was definitely not a business meal, you know, like all these kind of things. So when you're doing it, yeah, just make sure you're not mixing it. There's nothing worse than having to go through like, you know, 200 transactions a month, and most of them are you go into like the cinema, your fuel, as the Sainsbury's, you know, all these things. So just cutting it out, cutting the level of transactions down, it's gonna save you a bunch of time. Now, talking about transactions and transactions in general, what's really cool is if you've been given an invoice, make sure that you're using reference numbers on your app or on your online banking when you're paying for these things, because that can really help you match up things at a later date. Again, if you're not doing it regular and often, or you get out of the habit for some reason one month, you go back and trying to think, well, what, what did that payment pay? Using invoice numbers or references can really help that. And it certainly helps the person on the other end do their bookkeeping, so bear that in mind. And the same if you're issuing invoices to be paid by your clients or your customers, get them into the habit and suggest they use the reference numbers. Make sure you've got a clear reference, individual unique invoice number on your invoices, and that really helps you figure it out. If you're in software, it also helps the software suggest that this invoice might be the one that needs to be paid off, which is really cool. So um, yeah, reference numbers on everything and use them when making payments, and hopefully when people pay you, encourage them to use them. That's a massive one. Now, when you're looking to kind of make it all balanced and beautiful and lovely, then you wanna make sure that if anything's paid on credit, that you're getting regular supplier statements. So this is the bit where they ask you at the end of the month, look, you might have bought, so say you're an electrician and you buy all these bits from electrical wholesalers, they're gonna send you a statement at the end of the month to say that overall this is what you owe us. That's really important because you wanna check that you're happy that you've got all your invoices that are on that statement in your system. If you're in software, you should be able to show at any one time what you owe to other people. They call it an accounts payable, um, is, the, is the, the accounting term for it, and you'll be able to see. And if those two don't match, you know you might have a problem. You know you might be missing something. If the figure on that report says you owe blah de blah electrical 2,000 pound and your statement says 1,500 pound, there's something worth looking at there and it's just making sure you've captured all the expenditure. But there's nothing more irritating than not having those supplier statements. And if you outsource this to someone, they'll definitely want them. So yeah, making sure you get those regularly, get it set up, get it to your email so you've always got access to them. Now again, practical tip, we already talked about transaction levels. There's nothing as well worse than you got a receipt, you don't know how it's been paid for. And you might find this as you're going through your records. You're like, well, I've done on my bank. But it doesn't mean you've got all of your transactions. You might have paid in cash. You might have paid through your personal PayPal account. These things that aren't anywhere easily linked. So so trying to just pay by one payment method for all your business transactions can often help the bookkeeping process. It's not always commercially the, uh, what can be done. You know, Sometimes you do have to use other methods of payment just for security or other practical reasons. But if you can, trying to capture it all in one business bank account and one payment method is going to make it far easier if you just know all the transactions are there. So when you're out and about, just think about that, particularly with something like cash. And if you do use cash throughout the year, try and keep an idea of what cash balance you have at the end of the year. Because again, if you're looking to kind of really make your accounts balanced and beautiful, when you get to the end of them, um, you know, if you imagine you've put all these expenses you've paid for personally, somehow you would have had the cash for that. So you want to account for, well, okay, look, I took a hundred pound out of my bank account out the hole in the wall at the ATM. So you'd, you'd put that to cash. So you'd have a hundred pounds starting balance. And then all of these transactions have reduced that balance. In theory, if it says you've got 10 pound and one P at the end of the year, you should have 10 pound and one P somewhere. So keeping an eye on that cash balance and knowing what your business cash is, is a really good thing. Particularly important with a limited company because that money's not actually yours, it's the company's. Um, but with a sole trader, ultimately it's not a massive deal. But if you deal a lot in cash, keeping an eye on that regular cash balance is really important, but that might be for another video. But just for now, just keeping good records of what you're doing with any cash is really important. Now there's a few other micro tips we could go into, but I really wanna finish off with a, just an overall important one. And that's making sure that you've got kind of a consistent workflow and you're consistent with everything you do. So if you, regardless of what system you set up, you just get keep looking at ways to improve that workflow. Can I cut out, if every month I'm logging onto my O2 business account to download my O2 invoices, is there a piece of technology that can do that for me? The answer to that is yes. Um, and these kind of things, what chunks and steps can I cut out of my workflow? So have a look at that. Again, tech being a, a prime one for help saving those time, see if you can cut that down. But then also just be consistent with what you're doing, it can save some time. If you are using a spreadsheet, 
make sure you categorize things regularly into the same columns because when you come to prepare your tax return or if your accountant if you've got one does they'll want to see that and for you when you're looking at where you spent your money over the year and making some business decisions you want to know that those categories of spend are correct so try and be consistent if you always put something to travel don't suddenly switch it into another category for no reason um, you know just just be consistent and that will help you and again if you're using uh, software that AI is going to learn that consistency. If you're using a spreadsheet, it might suggest sometimes auto fill in that because they've seen it before. So, you know, the, the text getting better on all this, it could really help. So, yeah, system, keep looking to improve and make sure that you're consistent with your categorization. And there's some sort of final tips. So, there we go. There's some things to get you going. But honestly, regular and often and using tech are going to be the two big pieces to take away from this one. Please do share it with anybody that needs to know this information. And I'll see you in the next one.